Hello everyone and welcome to a another chapter of building a automatic cryptocurrency trading bot on Binance with Python. Again, this is Blockchain Engineer and you're currently on chapter 2. Now this is the second chapter of our 7 chapter series. Hopefully you enjoyed the introduction and wanted to learn a little bit more. In today's broadcast we will be discussing the functionality of the bot and incorporating buy and sell strategies so the goals for this chapter involve teaching you how to download the repository from github which I'm sure you're very familiar of and however this will be a fork of the main Binance Python uh, eventually we will be incorporating this with the main code hopefully I will be describing the functionality of the bots and we will verify the output from the main bot as well as we will discuss further outline and discuss further development so you can find the code that I will be talking about today on the Python Binance github examples folder but this will be through the Royball fork, which will hopefully one day be joined with the official Python Binance code. So this is just a bit about the README, which will be used as a central repository for a lot of the information on this project, just like most read readmes, and this will cover what you're going to need to know through a text base as well as linking to the examples. So a little bit of the breakdown how this is going to look is with a main trader bot which we will be discussing today. Now this will break off into two major functions as well which is to collect the historical data as well as portfolio management. Now portfolio management will also consider buy and sell signals and a track and index of cryptocurrencies which we've discussed before as well as and the historical data will analyze this data with crypto signals as well as visualize and create graphs of the data so we will be discussing three major python programs today binancekeys.py royballbot.py and save historical data which was modified by me as well Royball. So these three will be in the examples fork of the GitHub repository. So to get this working on your local machine, the first step is to create a Binance account and get the client key and secret key and save it in binancekeys.py would given the format. From there you're going to run royball.py and we will be able to see the outputs and verify that they are what similar to what we're discussing in this video. Um, there's a couple of possible errors to look out for. If your computer time is off the Binance server, you're going to get a thousand millisecond ahead, or the possibility for invalid keys. So the Binance Keys.py is a very simple program, just a few lines. And that is what you're going to save your API key and secret in, which will be re the retrieved excuse me, by Royball.py, which is our main function. Uh, we will be discussing Royball.py right now, which has the main formatting and different examples, pulling from different examples, including save historical data. Um, you'll see some of the examples that we're going to to implement from Royball.py coming up. So the variables that this accepts is a list of symbols to watch and collect data. So the cryptocurrencies you want to long and short those currency pairs. There's a time horizon depending on whether you want short, medium, or long term as well as a risk profile. So we want this to eventually be able to either be low risk, high risk, um, based upon user preference. So there's going to be various functions, for example, checking the system status to see how we are working with the Python with the uh, Binance server, 
placing a test order to ensure that the API keys and everything is working, the collection of coin prices and coin tickers, as well as collecting and displaying market depth, so the buy and sell orders, as well as the recent historical and aggregate trades for your account or the Binance server, and a few functions to convert time into different formats because Binance uses a millisecond format, that type of thing. So on the left hand side of the screen you can see the list of symbols and how that works. The, those are dif different pairs on the right hand side. We get the list of codes which will test the Binance server to ensure that it's communicating correctly with our program. Um, this will just get our withdrawal history, the system status, and the exchange info. Uh, I will show you what the outputs for that look like on the next slide. Now these are done within a try or an accept. So when we run these programs, so on this screen you can see our exchange status, withdrawal history, and info various limits for our output based on the Royball Pi. This is just to make sure everything's working. Now again, as a test for the Binance server, we're going to try to place a test order. And if there's any type of exception, such as an API key or the time is off, you will see a attention non-valid connection with Binance printed to the screen. Now, these next three functions are going to get our coin prices, our coin tickers, and our market depth. And this is going to display it to the screen as well as format the data in a way that will be easily manageable and help us to collect data for our future analysis. So for example, on this one we see the output from our coin prices. Now this is the latest price for our watch list of cryptocurrency pairs. So for example, we can see ETH. Ethereum divided by BTC, the price there, as well as BTC versus USDT, so around 8900 Now our tickers are going to give us quite a bit more information than our coin prices. So for each symbol on our watch list, you can see our bid quantity, ask price, ask quantity, bid price. So this is a another f very helpful function with an output to the screen. It's also stamped with the time as well. So the market depth is going to give us our, in the orange, in the top yellow box, you can see our currency pair. So this is BTC versus USDT. And this is for our asks. And you can see different prices and the amounts in a format, which is going to be easily manipulated as well as printed to the screen. So those three functions are very powerful, as you can tell, and provide quite a bit of information. This information will be used in our analyses for our future trading strategies as well as to collect all this data. Now here is some of our functions in various formats such as to get our recent trades, historical trades, and aggregate trades for the server. This will I will also post an output expected output for these functions as well. So you can see our recent trades along the top was as well as the time in a time struct as well as the Binance time formats. Now in the blue box you can see an error message is raised. And the very bottom you see aggregates trades. So I will be discussing a little bit more in the future the difference between recent trades and aggregate trades as you can tell there's quite a lot of information for both of them and they're both in different formats. Now this function is specifically designed to convert time from Binance milliseconds into a time struct. This function will get your local time and convert it to Binance. There's also back and forth functions as well. So this screen just shows our market depth functions, coin prices functions, and coin tickers functions, 
and how those are formatting and collecting the data and ultimately displaying it to the screen. I'd like to add a functionality that will ultimately save these in different files so that with a timestamp so that way we will be collecting data constantly and we will be able to ch base our trading strategies on for example the change in the buy and sell orders um, momentum on on that as as well as our other strategies that we will uh, be implementing as discussed in the introductory chapter such as using the stochastic RSI and Bollinger Bands so we will need to incorporate crypto signals into this function as well as our portfolio management now the final of the three programs we'll be discussing today are the historical data which I modified slightly to have the K lines be a function so that way we can run through multiple currency pairs as well as multiple time periods as well as adding a human readable day and time because the Binance is simply a milliseconds from a UTC time so that can provide a little bit of a challenge with the amount of milliseconds you don't know exactly when that is however January 1st to January 1st 2016 to January 1st 2018 is much more human readable and eventually I'd like to have both formats in the data storage and collection which it, it currently is with the Royball modified save data function so in conclusion I discussed the progress that's been made on the main trading bot as well as the data collection processes. The functionality was described as well as what's going to need to be implemented to implement a trading strategy as well and I created a readme with a fork of the Python Binance. Ultimately I will be submitting a pull request to Python Binance to get these listed on there as well. Future research and development is to solidify our buy and sell strategies, code out the portfolio management, and store the data in various formats. Again, thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider giving a like and a subscribe. Again, this is Blockchain Engineer. Thank you.